It's the 12th of January, 1985, six o'clock in the evening. HMS Trafalgar has just won her first high-profile victory of the war. While many of her previous battles were more impressive feats of seamanship, virtually all of them will remain highly classified for years, but this time it's different. The Soviet Union can deny the loss of its submarines as much as it likes, an invisible vessel being sunk out in the Atlantic is easy to cover up after all, but as much as they would wish it otherwise, the loss of a large surface ship is rather more difficult to hide, especially if its wrecked hulk finds itself beached on the Norwegian coast down the road from Trondheim. The loss of a capital ship in any conflict is always a big propaganda moment for the victors, and this one is certainly no exception, as photographs of the mighty cruiser stranded on the shore like a dead whale begin circulating on the front pages of virtually every western newspaper. In stark black and white, the world sees with its own eyes the drawn and miserable faces of a hundred Soviet sailors shivering on a freezing beach as they're rounded up by the Norwegian army. The USSR has been losing the war on the sea for weeks now, that much is plain to NATO planners behind the scenes, but now the general public has been given undeniable evidence of a humiliating Soviet defeat that cannot be denied with any amount of blustering from the Kremlin. It gives the crew of HMS Trafalgar no small amount of pleasure to read some of these headlines. Meanwhile at Northwood, however, Captain Cook's next task is already coalescing into being. While the loss of the Sverdlovsk was a propaganda blunder for the USSR, they can at least content themselves in the knowledge that it was not a particularly great strategic loss. The Sverdlovsk cruisers truly ceased to have any meaningful military value in the 1950s, something that Western military analysts are quick to point out in the papers, even at the risk of coming across as party poopers on this occasion. However, that's not to say the USSR does not possess other capital ships of genuine value. Their greatest and most impressive vessels are the Kirov-class battlecruisers. These mighty nuclear-powered capital ships are something of an anomaly in the Missile Age, with each being at least as massive as the grand old battleships that once fought at the Battle of Jutland in the First World War. What sets them apart, however, is that in lieu of big batteries of conventional guns, the Kirovs are instead armed with deck-mounted launch bays for 20 P-700 granite missiles. A NATO designation for these weapons is the SSN-19 Shipwreck, and for a very good reason. These terrifying anti-ship missiles can be armed with either high explosive or nuclear warheads, and are designed with the specific purpose of destroying US Navy supercarrier groups from a range of up to 388 miles away, which, for reference, is about the same distance that lies between Faslane and Portsmouth. The Kirov is one of a number of important tools that the USSR possesses with the purpose of trying to neutralize American sea power in the North Atlantic, and the bad news is, one of them has just set sail. Unbeknownst to Ed Cook and his men, even as they sail with one capital ship under their belts, the Royal Navy is preparing to send them after another, and this one is a lot more dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Cold Waters, the HMS Trafalgar campaign, uh, which I've not played in ages, so I'm going to be rusty as hell. Uh, so welcome to episode whatever this is. Um, it's at least eight or nine or something like that. I, whatever happens, I, I did not expect the campaign to last this long. I, I figured like maybe around uh like video five or six i'd probably uh, probably get my submarine sunk and yet we're still here and i honestly hadn't really prepared for that eventuality um nevertheless here we are floating off the coast of trondheim after that whole um interesting incident with the with the large soviet cruiser that beached itself problem is now though our current briefing is to go to grid blue 44 and intercept an enemy uh surface battle group go to blue 44 locate and sink capital ships uh which um is not a great assignment you want to get after not playing the game for a while uh, <laughs> so this might be the last video in the series uh also additionally just to make things even better if we go to exostatus report, all I have left is tigerfish torpedoes, um, and my my decoys were completely out of missiles. Uh, not that I suspect they'd be very useful actually against proper capital ships, but still, um, we don't have any missiles, which is uh, yeah, that kind of sucks. It's not good. 
Um, so we just got, what, 11 tigerfish to try and deal with this mission? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's not going to go well, is it? I just, I could feel it in my bones. All right. All right. Now, hope, maybe we'll just have to pray for favorable sea conditions that, that will hopefully prevent us from being detected very easily. Um, if the sea conditions are just right, then we might be able to get away with some absolute serious, honest to goodness, cheekiness today. But we'll see. Need to get a blue 44, though, and probably quite quick, because if it's a capital group, it'll be traveling well fast. Okay, we got two subs floating on past. Not interested in them. Right. There's like... Oh boy, I think it's you guys. I'm pretty sure it's you guys. And I've come at them full tilt, haven't I? I've come at them full tilt. We're doing 20 knot. Oh my. Oh, weak surface duct, weak thermal layer. Oh no. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. Oh, uh, no. All hands man battle stations. Action stations, rather. We are in the Royal Navy, after all. On sound our new ring ship for ultra quiet. All right. Well, hello, Sierra 1. And Sierra 2. These, these guys are not going to be difficult to locate. That, that's for sure. Okay, let's take things slow. Let's not use any time compression. Let's get back into the groove. Let's get identifying stuff. Sea conditions. Right, we're below the layer anyway. Not that it's a very good one, but we're below it. What's the Con ambient noise level like? Bearing. Eh, zero. Noisy-ish. Zero. Designated Sierra. Six. Giddy like right in front of us. Con sonar new contact bearing. Zero. Come We've got helicopters two, with three, dipping one, sonar seven, as well. That's what these nine. are. On the map. All right, let's try and figure out what these are. They ain't submarines. Or at least I doubt it. They might have a submarine escort. To be fair, uh, that is something that can happen with these uh, big capital groups. Uh, you look like a Cresta. Yep. Con sonar, Sierra, a Cresta 1, we've got RBU-6000, six, six, Set-65 torpedoes, P-6 missiles. Anti-ship land attack missile. Right, oh, we're not worried about that then, I don't think. The RBU-6000s are basically like World War II style hedgehog launchers. They're not very nice. Don't get within 6,000 meters of a guy armed with those. Um, who else we got? Sierra One, what are you? They might have a tanker with them, to be fair. Ah, Krivak One. Oh, he's an nasty one. He's got a toad sonar. Con sonar. Sierra 1 is classified as escort. I think these guys might be about to locate us on active po sonar, you know. Whoa, what? Are we, are we moving right now? X. Press X to neutralize. Dude's reporting we're passing certain... Okay, we're, we're fine. We're fine. So, Jesus, dude. Don't dive me below crush dev by accident. It'll be the first time I've lost a submarine in this game, I have to admit. Akirov. Oh boy, Akirov, really. That would be quite the prize if we could get our hands on it. Capital ship. All of the nasty armament, though. You said 80 torpedoes. <laughs> Con sonar, Sierra 4 Cashin? is classified as escort. Cashins are rubbish, we don't need to worry about them too much. Where's this last one? What are you? A 
Kara. Con sonar, Sierra 3 is classified as escort. Have you got anti-sub missiles? Yeah, something like that, I think. Sierra 7. No idea where you are. Probably a fishing trawler or something. Maybe a whale. Oh yeah, I think it might be a whale. It's classified as biologic. It's a biologic. It was. It's a blue whale. Hello. Being deafened by all that sonar. Oh boy, there they are. There they are, gentlemen and ladies. Let's have a look at the. Oh boy, I think they might have spotted us. That's eleven on the active sonar right there. That's worrying. You not so much. You not so much. The Kirov actually has pretty powerful sensors of its own. The Kirov could probably, yeah, plus 14, unactive. Assuming the Kirov is pinging. I'm sure it knows we're here. The Kara not so much. The Kashin's heading off in that direction some, some, for some reason. Let's have a look at that magnificent Kirov, shall we? That's... Is it just launched missiles? It might have done. But there it is. Beast for ship. It's a gigantic missile cruiser. Oh, it's... Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, they're launching stuff at us. Uh, okay. Right. Think, think, think. Have a decoy. Shoot two, four. Aye, sir. Have a decoy. Oh, I've forgotten all the numbers. I've forgotten all the numbers. What, what's our maximum depth? 600 meters. Make depth. Con sonar. We are cavitating. We don't have our total array out, do we? No. Oh, this might be it, honestly. They've dropped one right on top of us. Con sonar. Torpedo in the water. Yep, Torpedo they've acquired the us. Bearing. Two, nine, three. Spoof it with a noisemaker. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra three bearing zero seven three. Passing eleven on con sonar torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. I don't know what type one, of torpedo is six, after us right eight. now. Passing problem. 1,500 feet. Con sonar regained contact on. Sea. Passing 1,400 feet. Con passing 1,500 feet. Passing 1,600 feet. Passing All right, that one feet. was a set 65 Con by the looks of things. contact. Sierra, four. Last bearing zero four passing eighteen hundred. At this point, I think I'd be very lucky Con to just disengage. Contact. Sierra one. Last bearing zero seven three. Contact is in the baffles. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra four. Bring ship for ultra quiet. Yep, let's go quiet now. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra two bearing zero. This is cheating five, a bit, but four. what are you? I actually have no idea what that torpedo is. It's probably an airdrop one. Right, one of them has gone Con after our noisemaker. Regained contact on Sierra six bearing zero six one. Con sonar regained contact Can on Sierra seven the C4 bearing at? zero five. Two. Just but just below our crush depth is where the C4 is. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra one bearing zero seven seven. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not looking very optimistically at this scenario right now. On Sierra three bearing zero seven four. Come left to one seven zero helm I. A torpedo coming this way. I bet that. I bet you anything that's you said eighty launched from the Kirov. We definitely want to get out of that thing's way. Um, so yeah, we'll hang a left. One, six, three, helm, I. 
move on down this way. Get right down to 600 meters. And try and evade and lose them, basically. They might, hopefully they'll go after the decoy. And then maybe we can reposition and do something here. Our primary mission is to sink the Kirov. Nothing else actually matters. Um, problem is, honestly, Kirov is, is like, it's fast enough to get away from us if it wants to. If it, go, if it, if it heads away from us at, at flank speed, like, there's no way we're catching it. And to be honest, even if I had missiles, we wouldn't be able to touch it anyway, because it's got really good anti-missile systems. Con, less than 50 feet below the keel. We, uh, we kind of had to take them by surprise, and we were not able to, um, unfortunately. It's, it's, it's... Con, helm, steady course. Came that one too fast on the campaign map, and also I just... The game kind of threw the middle finger up at me by having me spawn directly in their path like that, which really ticks me off when that happens. Oh yeah, look at these straight runners coming in this way. Those were not air airdropped. Let's see, can we... There's the, uh, there's the, there's the offending article. Is this the first time we've encountered any air units in this campaign? That's kind of unusual, really. The seafloor sloped here. Oh, it is. That's not good. Uh, it's unhelpful. It's supremely unhelpful. Right, some of the torps are going off. Come right Sadly, this is running far too deep for the uh, for this torpedo to decide to go after one of the ships. I think. Probably should have launched some of my own tigerfish while I had the chance, although. To be quite honest, uh, the Kirov would have just simply outrun them. Where is the Kirov right now anyway? We're not really sure. It's difficult to say, apparently. Two, one, three, three. Helm, I. God's come straight at us, isn't there? Hopefully, we can get under its sensor cone. That's all I'm hoping for, really, right now. Come left to one, six, six. Helm, I. Can anybody see us still? The Crester might be able to. It's 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 below ten, but if he didn't lose contact with us to begin with, he should still be able to see us. The Krivak, the Kara, these guys. None of them can see us. They're actually fleeing in the opposite direction right now. Only the Crestor seems to be heading over here to engage us. I could take a shot at the Crestor. It's the maximum launch depth for these things. 600 meters, really. up a little bit to avoid hitting the floor. Don't like the way you're coming towards me, mate. This, this torpedo right here I am worried about. I'm hoping it just passes straight overhead. Hoping and praying. Oh, there we go. There's us down there.
Right, we're probably outside of Centre Cone right now, I would say. Thank goodness. I think you set 80, that would have been very, very difficult to evade. Chances are it would have horribly murdered us. It passing five, overhead. Five, four, nine, die by. Uh, not really, is the answer. What's that Cresta doing? Oh, it's, still, it's chasing the decoy still. In fact, it's dropping depth charges over there at our decoy. It's firing its RBUs. So this is what they look like. They go down like this. And, uh,. Usually they'll, you know, they'll detect a submarine down there and then explode when they get close to it. Feet. But uh, it's only detecting a decoy at the minute, so they're just going straight down. But you don't want to get hit by a barrage of them because it really is at that point just an absolute lottery as to whether or not you survive. So yeah, they're just exploding on the sea bed, I think. Oh boy, I think we are actually scraping the bottom. <laughs> there we go. That's, um... <laughs> Not very professional. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it would be a lot a bit harder to detect via active sonar right now, I imagine, but, um... Monsieur Cresta, hello. How are you? I'd like to sink you at least, just because you're pissing me off. Can I set you for surface shipping? Yeah. Make it a passive homer. In an ideal world, we would keep the wire. Do you know what? <sighs> Launching this close to the seabed. I think, no, I think we'll be okay. I thought maybe if we were slightly pointed nose down there, we could just launch it straight into the seabed and then exploded and sunk us. Passing 1,700 feet. Gone fire control. We've lost the wire. Lost the wire. See what he does anyway. All right, little torpedo, you're just going to go straight into the seabed, aren't you? Yep. Well, that was dumb. <laughs> that was pretty dumb. I need to set to like active almost as soon as it leaves the tubes, don't I? If I want this to actually work. The Kirov apparently is headed this way. That's interesting. And the <laughs> funny thing is, is <laughs> There's a bunch of torpedoes headed the Kirov's way, but I don't think they'll actually uh, engage a surface target, so lucky for him, he's not going to be sunk by friendly fire. God, could you imagine, though? Right, okay, let's try this again. See if I can get it to just... Passing 1,600 feet. Gone fire control, we've lost the wire. If it just goes straight up... Oh, I didn't launch it as a surface one, did I? Oh my god, now what is it doing? It's just circling. Oh no! Oh, what have I done? Oh, I'm the worst sub-captain today. Can you tell I've not played the game in a while? Right, surface. What the hell is it doing, actually? It's just snaking away, isn't it? Into the seafloor. <laughs> just casually announcing my presence to everybody oh, right now. Tube one ready. Okay, let's try this again. I'm wasting torpedoes here. This is really dumb. Shoot, two, three. Aye, oh, this one, this one, this one kept its wire. That makes a difference. And it is going straight up. I 
could blame it all on the tiger fish just being crap, but really? I mean... <laughs> not fooling anyone, am I? Alright. Well, it's already active, so it's going to be whizzing away at top speed. There's Mr. Kirov. I'd like to go take go after the Kirov if I can. Just skip the Crestor entirely. Now I've got a, now I've got a torp with a wire. Thing is, the Kirov should know where we are, but it, I think it's more interested in the decoy. And the same with the Crestor at the moment. It's something I can very happily exploit. Frankly, I'm gonna reload a couple of tubes while we're at it and get another decoy on the go. Because decoys are super effective in this game. Thank goodness. Tempted to just come to a dead stop right now, actually. Make turns for zero knots, maneuvering eye. Another torpedo just went over our heads. What was that? Another U set 80, I think. Con, torpedo room, tube two ready. Well, I tell you what. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. No, 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 no. Don't, don't acquire the Cresta. Oh boy. Time compression. Con, torpedo room, tube four ready. Getting rid of the Cresta wouldn't be a terrible idea. It's just now I've Con got. Sonar, noise maker, bearing. Right, he's dropped Zero, a noise maker, which means we'll sail two. past, and maybe go straight for the Kirov. What's, what speed is the Kirov doing right now? 16 knots. So if we carry on like this, we can catch it. But he is speeding up, though. What's the top speed of a tiger fish? 30, uh, 24 knots. When it's active, it's active, 35 knots. So it's one knot slower than the Kirov at maximum speed. Oh, boy. And there's another Cresta coming to investigate. Alright, I don't think we're going to catch the Kirov. Forget it. This Cresta is headed our way, though. Weapon acquired. How are we doing? Getting close to the seafloor. Kirov's leg in it. 25 knots and still speeding up. Con sonar, noise maker, bearing, zero, uh, Crest has five, done and dropped a noise maker and I think a knuckle as well. We can't actually hear him right now. Torpedo, he's right there somewhere. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. I think he's got him. Con sonar, yep. noise maker, bearing zero. Five, Popping noise five. makers like a mad lad. Hello, Cresta One, you're back. Sierra Two, actually, is what he's designated as. It's a bit, it's a bit, bit more accurate if I refer to them by their designations on the sonar map. He's at 34 knots now. Alright, this is the tricky thing about trying to sink surface God, ships with a tiger fish. Acquired. You have to kind of cut the corner quite dramatically for this to really work. Because right now we're only one knot faster than this bugger. I'm never going to catch him if he carries on a straight line. At least, I don't think we'll catch him. Not with enough time on the... Uh, time to run remaining. We've only got six minutes left to run on this thing. Okay, he's turning this way now. I'm manually wiggling the torpedo at the minute to try and make it follow a lead intercept rather than a direct. Try and gain a little bit of ground on the bugger. I 
in an ideal world, we'd have much better sea conditions. We'd have a nice strong thermal layer, which we could hide under, and then we could attack. You know, we get ourselves into a good position and attack the surface ships from like a properly nice, uh, like, like like properly close range. I've had it before in like uh, little skirmishes I've done, to sort of like when I'm still learning the game and trying to figure things out. Um, I've had it happen before where like there was a nice strong thermal layer and I could be practically right underneath. I could be down at 600 meters directly underneath the battle group and they still wouldn't know exactly where I was because uh, I was deep enough and also the thermal layer was strong enough. And that's the kind of, those are the kind of conditions we would have ideally liked to have today. But alas. Con sonar, noisemaker bearing zero five. Oh no you don't. Zero. Torpedo cam uh, is finally control. happening, Weapon folks. Acquired. I'm going to cheat like a bastard because screw surface ships. <laughs> See what I mean? You have to sort of cut this corner a little bit because they, they, they do sort of like go in these wide circles. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, zero, five, four. As they drop noisemakers to try and evade. Now, if we've got enough time left, we'll probably get him just because we are one knot faster, technically, than this little crate. I think some of the other escort ships are actually the other way around. They're like one knot faster than our torpedo, which makes them insanely difficult to sink when they know you're there. Yeah, it's not going to help you now, mate. It's slowly creeping up on you. Faster, comrades, faster! More power! It's gaining on us by like a centimeter a second. If this doesn't, isn't actually enough to sink it, I'm gonna be mad. That little sailor on the deck there, he's just like, oh boy, I should move. You can explode any time you like, Torpedo. Con, so there we go. Contact. Ah, it's sunk zero, in one. Two. Beautiful. Last bearing, zero, Sometimes five, it takes two seven. or more if you're unlucky. Right, how are we looking? We haven't crashed into the seabed, that's good. Do you know where we are, Mr. Cre you don't. You don't know where we are. Neither does the Kirov. Kirov's still going crazy fast, unfortunately, but... <sighs> How many fish do we have left, eh? Not a lot. Let's try and send a one up the Kirov's baffles. I need to get the lay of the land out here a little bit first. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need this another one. I need to launch all, all, almost straight up, really. Come left to zero six eight. Make turns four five. Let's turn nine. us a bit to the left, please. There we go. Make turns four zero nine. Oh, it's turned eye. left, has it? I don't know how we're going to get this Kirov, honestly, other than trying to creep up on it and it's baffles, which is not an easy thing to do. It's a pretty short thing of a towed sonar if it wants to deploy it, yeah. And he's got his chum up there. Might have to get creative with the decoy, I don't know. There's also a helicopter dipping his sonar up there as well. We're being quiet as a mouse, luckily. Still, I don't know why they've scattered like this. It's kind of weird. They like they, they they like decided to just ditch half their escort, which, if you ask me, is a bit peculiar. Oh, now that's not good. What kind of torpedoes does a Cresta have? 
So 65s. Okay, we probably don't need to worry about those torpedoes then. Wait, no, I'm reading the wrong thing. No, no, 665s. Yeah, we don't need to worry about those torpedoes as long as we stay deep enough. Which at the moment we're actually not, you know. Come left two. Make turns four, five, not maneuvering on. Oh crumbs. Um Make turns for one zero knot maneuvering eye. Bloody seabeds crept up and now we're above five hundred meters. That's not good. Could do the old Red October trick and just go straight out the torpedoes and hope that they uh, don't activate soon enough, but I don't think that's going to work at our present speed. <laughs> Passing 1400 feet. Oh boy, there's an airdrop bomb behind us. The helicopters have a limited number of air, air launch torpedoes. Um, so once they get through all of those, they won't be able to bother us except by detecting us with their sonar and relaying that information to the other ships. So it is, a, on, uh, it is actually good to see the helicopters dropping their torpedoes where they can't harm us. Because it means they've got one less to get us with later. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit here and engage time compression. All right, we are below 500 meters now. Only just, though. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Okay, Kirov's turned back. I'm pretty sure the Cresters probably and, and whatnot. They probably also have a limited supply of torpedoes. It's just they're going to have a lot of them. Con maneuvering, making turns for five knots. Passing eighteen. And like the helicopters, which I think only have like four. So it's pretty easy for them to use them all up over the space of a mission. <laughs> the blue whales turn back as well. <laughs> He's spectating over there. Crestor seems to be barely moving. It's going he's going like one knot. Wow, he's going very slow. Maybe he's to try and detect us. That might be it. If I were to launch a torpedo right in his face this very second, he might have a devil of a job getting away from it. Considering he's facing us and he's at a dead stop right now, more or less. That's something to think about. In the meantime, I'm going to set all of these to surface mode, so we don't have a repeat of the earlier incident. And I'll leave them on passive homing instead of active, because you know, a ship is not exactly difficult to track with passive homing. I'm worried about the Kirov, because he has some nasty torpedoes. Does he have RBUs as well? Of course he does, yeah. Yeah, and don't like it, don't like it. More worried about those RBUs than the, the torpedoes from this guy, but the Kirov, he's got, you said 80s, and he's got RBUs. And uh, anti-submarine missiles. He's got, he's got the lot. He's very well equipped. There goes a helicopter right over the top of us. If I can get back to the surface view, I guess not. Camera's being weird. Oh boy, someone's firing. Depth charge is out in front of us. What's firing that then? Is it the Cresta? Might be the Cresta. Unless... Oh, they have an aircraft as well. Alright, that might be what was dropping them. Didn't even notice this thing. Passing 
torpedo exploding over there. Launch one this way at the Kirov. Ship two, one. Aye, sir. Kept its wire. Amazing. Ship one two, this way at the Cresta. Also Aye, kept its wire. Oh boy, right. We suddenly have a lot riding on this. Because the Kirov, as of right now, I don't think it know it won't a minus thirty eight passive, it isn't going to hear us if we launch. Cresta will. And it knows where we are anyway, because it's got cost on active, which is really worrying, honestly. get as close as possible to that Kirov before it knows the torpedo is here. Kind of the same with the Cresta really, but particularly the Kirov. As soon as he starts to turn away, I need to send it to active. position in relation to the seabed as well, really. It's weird that I've never seen a service ship do this before, you know, just just start going really, really slow. Oh, you're kidding. Did we did one of them hit the seabed? Oh, for fuck's sake. That's in, that's just incredibly annoying. Right. New mission for you. Right, we lost the wire on that one, but I don't I don't really care quite so much. Passing 600 meters. Whoa there. Passing Keep us at 600, please. Don't go any lower than that. The lower you go, the more chance you hit to critical crush depth. You got lucky there. Glad I caught that. If I'd been on time compression, then we might have been toast. Weapons. I'm going to let this run. I'm going to keep it on torpedo cam so I can see how close it is getting to the bottom. Right, the Cresta one just launched another torpedo, I think. Mr. Kirov, you're still coming straight towards us. Someone's dropping depth charges, probably the plane. Um, I'm going to launch a decoy in that direction. Two, two, four. Aye, sir. All right, you need to go active. Head for the surface. Wow, you were within like a meter of hitting the bottom there. Head for the surface, little torpedo. Nab me a Kirov. Catch me a big fish. Before the big dumb fish has a moment to react. That's a set 65 is launched on us. I'm not worried about that. No, it's on a bit of an intercept course with us right now, but I'm not so worried about that. Weapon acquired. Okay, good. It's launching missiles. That I don't like. In fact, I think it's launching... Yeah, it's launching RBUs on our vague look. In fact, it's launching them on the, uh, the decoy, which is fantastic. I think launching that decoy was a good choice, a good life choice. Now the question is, is this torpedo going to be able to catch the Kirov and do some damage to it and hopefully slow it down so that we can go in for the kill? That's the difficult bit.
get the weapon, get the target data for the Kirov. Get this torpedo pointed towards the intercept, Pippa. Con, helm, steady course. He's doing 32 knots right now. We need to get him otherwise. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, zero, eight, three. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Get him right in the propellers, in the engine room, something like that. Knacker this guy. All right, we've got to hit. That predictably does not sunk him, but did you hear the pitch of his engines just suddenly go right about then? That's good news. Right, now we just have to worry about the brace of U-Set 80s headed our way. Come left to one, eight, nine, helm I. Come left to two, six, five, helm I. Come left to two, six, nine, helm uh, I. Reload, reload, reload. Give me another decoy. And I'm tempted to go flank speed here, if I'm Con, honest. Helm, steady course. I think Mr. Kirov is almost is gonna be dead in the water pretty soon. Come left to one nine seven helm I. Come right to Two, six, one, oh my. Oh, these I, these you said eighties are a problem. Um, they're a big problem. They're Make shooting right down to our depth right three, now. Two knots. Make turns for five knots. Maneuvering eye. I want to launch one more torpedo in the Kirov while well, it's just floating there. Right, lost the wire. I don't really care though, because I wasn't going to stick around. Oh god! Come right to two six zero. I think I. I think these are passive homing torpedoes. If we just rig ship for ultra quiet. Con we... sonar torpedo in the water. Oh, no! Torpedo in the water. Bearing zero six five. Come right to two five eight helm I. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra one last bearing zero eight three. Contact is in the baffles. Con helm steady course. Oh boy, I think this we might be screwed. I don't know how long if if I can evade a use at eighty at all. If I'm honest with you, it's so fast. It has a good seeker on it. Going for the noisemaker at the moment. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra 5. Bearing gun knuckle formed. Oh boy, that was close. It turned straight towards. I didn't get a notification about that from the from the uh, the, the, the announcer dude. But it, it took it went straight after us. It went past gun, the noisemaker and went straight for me. Get that noisemaker loaded. Uh, noise maker. Decoy. Moss. Whatever it is. Get the, get the decoy loaded. That's it. It's right behind us. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra 3. Bearing 0, 7, 5. Sneaky passive homing bastard. Con sonar, noisemaker bearing one, one, three. It's going Knuckle round, it's going straight for me. Or is it? Con, torpedo room, tube four ready. No, it's reacquired. Passing 
passing 1900 feet. Shoot two four. Con sonar lost contact. Go little moss. Save my bacon, please. Feet. Passing 1700 feet. Passing 1600 feet. Con sonar lost contact. Passing 1500 feet. Con knuckle formed. Passing 1400 feet. Passing 1300 feet. Passing 1200 feet. Con sonar regained. If I can get like directly Sierra above four. it, Bearing I'll be zero. out of its sensor code. Make turns for zero. Kind of like I am right now. Make turns for zero knots. Unless it's heading Maneuver straight nine. up towards me, of course. But I think it might. Be headed after our decoy. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing one, two, five. Come In case we need to turn around two, and get six, out of here. Five. Hell, I. Con sonar, regained contact on Sierra Seven. Bearing I am frankly zero, amazed right four, now we haven't been zero. depth charged into oblivion. Uh, it's, if I'm completely honest with you, folks. Um. That's the main thing that baffles me more than anything else at the moment. The crest is still sat there, obviously completely unbothered by the torpedo I did send in this direction. Yeah. What's that torpedo doing? I think it's just it's chasing after the decoy. All right, we've got one moss left, and I'm going to load it. All right, who can see me right now? Oh, the Kirov's gone down! Holy crap! What happened there? Did it just take on too much? Oh my god. Do you know what? And I'm sad we missed this because I was too busy shitting myself. Um, I think it got sunk by one of its own weapons. See, there's the hit we got. And there's another one. <laughs> they sunk themselves! <laughs> you arrogant ass! You've killed us! Oh, I wish I knew if it was him that sunk himself or if it was the Cresta that sunk him. On, torpedo room two, four, oh ready. my days! Oh god, we're being we're being tracked. We're being tracked. Oh, I was too distracted by that hilarious thing happening three, back there, and two, this torpedo has nine. turned back around and has immediately acquired me because fuck me, that's why. Make depth six zero zero die by. Con sonar lost contact. I have one more left. Con helm steady course. Con sonar regained contact on passing thirteen hundred feet. I'm gonna go straight under it right now. I would like to go straight under it. Fire the moss directly behind us. Passing 1300 feet. Passing 1200 feet. Oh, you're going to go for the moss. Please go for the moss. You're not going for the moss, are you? Passing 1100 feet. Con, knuckle formed. Alright, we formed a knuckle, Con, which is a bit like using a noisemaker. On Sierra 1, bearing. Passing 1000 feet. Con sonar lost contact. Eep. Sierra six last bearing zero. Passing nine hundred feet. Con sonar lost contact. Passing eight hundred feet. Please go after the moss. Seven hundred feet. Please go Con after the moss. Please. <laughs> Con sonar, we are cavitating. I don't even know where it is now. Five hundred feet. It's down there. Passing 400 feet. All right, we still have the crest to deal with, but I think right now it's mostly right, interested two, in that moss, one, and then it'll probably two, be interested in that moss. Nine. We've got three mosses in the water right now, which is a bit insane, frankly, but there it is. It's a friggin' passive torpedo. I don't know where it is. Con, helm, steady course. 
Come left to one. Best thing we we'll probably do right now is just try and make make some distance here. We've got the Kirov's down. The Kirov oh, is sunk. No. We can disengage as soon as we're safe. I don't care about this stupid Crestor over here. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra six bearing three five nine. Full steam ahead. Let's get away from this thing. You say eighties band. I hate them so much. They are just terrifying. I mean, it could be worse, you know, we could be playing as the Russians and we could get shot at by like a Mark 48 from the Americans, which is even scarier, but uh, crumbs, man. I just wish I'd, lo I'd love to. I'd love to know who actually got the kill on the Kirov, whether it self killed itself, or whether it was the Crestor up here that magnificently sank it. But uh, either way, <laughs> another proud, glorious day for the Soviet Navy. should probably check our baths from time to time. In fact, honestly, rig ship for ultra let's quiet. rig for ultra quiet and I will pop, I'll pop out the toad array for the first time in this entire engagement and try to see if I can figure out where that passive home has got to. With any luck, it's going after either that or that. And not us. I think I can hear the... T oh, there's the Kirov in the distance. Holy crap, that's pretty spooky looking, isn't it? There it is. There's our quarry. Good heavens. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra 6, bearing 353. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra 7, bearing 007. Rest in peace, mighty Kirov. Hell of a ship, honestly. Alright, what's our speed? Five knots. Deploy the toad array! Hello, Blue Whale. He's back again. Has somehow managed to not be torpedoed in the midst of everything that's been going on in here. I'm, I'm, I could learn a thing or two from this whale, apparently. Accidental whale torpedoings are um, a fact of life in submarine warfare. Actually, the, the, the. Um, I'm pretty sure the Royal Navy claimed a few whales back down in the South Atlantic during the Falklands War. So, since the policy was really to shoot first and ask questions later when they detected something, um, unfortunately, they killed quite a few whales. Right, uh, we don't have the green light down here, so we can't disengage yet. There's hide no hair of that torpedo, so I'm a happy man. Honestly. If I was feeling particularly greedy or suicidal, I could turn around and try and go for that Crestor. But with that cash in inbound, I think I'd rather not. It's all the same to you. We've accomplished our mission objectives. I'd like to leave now. Close down 300. Flank speed. I don't care if we're cavitating at this point. Just get me out of here. Until we see that green light. 
Khan, less than 50 feet below the keel. Yeah, yeah, I know. Passing Shut up, baby, I know it. Feet. Passing 800 feet. Passing 700 feet. Passing 600 feet. Con sonar, we are cavitating. Yeah, we're cavitating. Like I give a damn. Passing 300 feet. Just want to get out of here. I want to get out. There it is, green light. Leave combat! Krivak escaped, Kara escaped, Kashin escaped, Kirov sunk, Crest 1 sunk. And another Crest 1 escaped. Total tonnage 35,500 tons. Reused. Uh, let's see. Wait, we have four Tigerfish remaining and that's it. No systems damaged by some absolute miracle. Uh, we came out of that unscathed. Talk about best of a bad job. Flippin' egg. I don't know how we're alive still. I actually don't know how we're alive. Perhaps I have more muscle memory for this game than I remember, but... Uh, I felt for sure once they started lobbing you set 80s at me at point-blank range, we were toast. Like, as soon as one locked onto us, I was like... I, I, was, I, was, I pretty much figured that was going to be it. But I somehow managed to wriggle out of that. I don't really entirely know how. I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. I do not know how I did that. Torpedo evasion in this game is something I really suck at usually, so. Um. <sighs> Man. Okay. As long as, like, I can, I can do all right, as long as, like, none of the torpedoes actually acquire me. Once they acquire me, usually, like, that's it. I might as well head for the surface so I can get out of, so I can get to safe escape depth. <laughs> uh, and then hope I don't get taken prisoner. You know, but uh, today we somehow managed it. Um, continue. Uh, mission update. Excellent job, Commander. Your neutralization of this high-priority target will severely reduce the enemy's ability to hinder our operations. Sink Lance sends regards to you and your crew. Await further orders. Those further orders had better be go back to friggin' Fazlane and rearm. Re oh, I believe we've got a medal. Ah, yes. I don't. I don't. I don't have the latest version of Dot Mod, and therefore I'm be still being given American medals, but. <laughs> In a hypothetical situation in which I were an American sub-captain, I would have been awarded the Bronze Star, I think. NATO attacks hit hard. NATO officials revealed today that several key Warsaw Pact airfields and air defense systems had been put out of action by airstrikes over the last 24 hours. Though no specifics were provided, it was widely assumed. The attacks originated from Allied aircraft carrier groups operating in recently cleared areas of the Norwegian Sea. The official Soviet news agency Pravda was quick to counter this information. Our heroic naval forces are turning the Norwegian Sea into a graveyard of imperialist vessels. We will soon wipe the aggressors from the ocean and liberate our fellow workers from enslavement by their Western capitalist masters. Sure, whatever, bro. <laughs> whatever you say. Okay, return immediately to Fazlane, Scotland for repairs and to replenish stores. Thank the Lord. Brilliant. Brilliant. Sometimes if you get low enough in your stores, they will actually, they will explicitly order you to go back to base and rearm. This is one of those occasions. We've had it in the past where they didn't do that, didn't we? And that's when we missed out on a few missions and yeah. <sighs> Overall, our crew proficiency is seasoned. Fire control seasoned. Torpedoman seasoned. Damage control experts. <laughs> Despite the fact that I've not really taken any damage so far, except for you know, self-sabotaging my own damn sonar array on occasion, my toad one, you know. <laughs> but uh, the 2.5 decibels of self-noise reduction is real nice, so. Our navigation is seasoned as well. Well, well, well. Continue on course. Pause. Save. Pause again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that nail biter. Um, 
I'd like to say I enjoyed it, but at the same time, it was mostly me being very, very terrified. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if I really did enjoy that. Um, regardless, though, we somehow managed to survive that, and uh, we're going to be heading back to Faz Lane next time. And then from from thence, I don't know what our orders will be. Um, I don't know. Something a little easier would be nice, but hey. I don't know because part of me would part of me would be like perfectly happy if I got sunk and uh, that would be the end of the campaign. Then the stress would finally end. But uh, <laughs> uh, it would be ungentlemanly of me, unsportsmanlike, if I were to actually invite disaster. So I must therefore try my best until the very end to survive. I have beaten a campaign once in Cold War just before. In fact, I beat the Soviet one in Dot Mod. I've never beaten a NATO campaign. I beat the Soviet one in Dot Mod because I was using the Papa class submarine, which is just some really weird, cheesy nonsense. Um, I haven't really done it in a, what you might call a legit sub. I mean, the Papa was a real submarine. It really existed. It was just, you know, it was a one of a kind, incredibly unique, incredibly expensive Soviet submarine that was never repeated. Um, and it, 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 the way it works in the game is it was really cheesy because you can just go so fast in that thing it outruns virtually every nato torpedo so when you're in the papa you have you can have a lot of fun because stealth goes completely out the window you just ram on full speed full tilt you launch all your torpedoes and missiles and then you just <laughs> you just leroy jenkins it basically you just leg it um and and in the safe in the knowledge that you're going to be out, able to outrun virtually everything that comes your way uh, not so much in the trafalgar we're having to sort of do it properly in this thing um, I've just noticed those two satellites down here being incredibly useful by scanning the Soviet Union and not the ocean. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. Next time, we will be booking it back to Scotland. Um, hope you enjoyed, everybody. And I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.